Hello and welcome to the 2020 Photography Show Perfecting the Art Creativity Workflow Programme, sponsored by Lassie, a premium brand of uh, Seagate Technology. My name is Keith Warburton and I am the brand director here at Global Distribution. Global has been in the media and entertainment market for 25 years. Lassie is a perfect fit for our industry, uh, long-term pedigree, great breadth of products, and uh, we'll be hearing about that later uh, from our panelists. I'm pleased to be joined by Edouard and Michael from Lassie, and an enormous pleasure to be joined by Brett Danton, a photographer, filmmaker, and Mike Will, a creative uh, photographer and founder of UK Shooters. During the next 60 minutes, we'll be hearing from Lassie, a uh, review of their product line for the creative professionals, and we'll also be engaging with Brett and Mike as to how they plan out their shoots, work out their work workflow, and um, uh, what makes them tick. So it is an interactive discussion. So we welcome you, the audience, for uh, your questions. And we'll be putting these to Brett and Mike later in the program. So uh, without uh, further ado, let's have some introductions from our panel. And let's start with uh, Mike, who actually is beaming live from Turkey. I'll go with the correct name. It's Brett. You got it around the wrong way. I slapped you already. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mike's down the bottom. Um, yeah, so I know I'm over in um, Turkey uh, looking at locations. So uh, quite nice. It's 34 degrees outside. Um, uh, so I've been enjoying the uh, sunny weather, looking at locations around Turkey. Um, have a few bits and pieces that we're going to talk about. Um, you know, I've got the Canon C300 Mark III here. Um, we've had the, uh, the, the one big SSD, which I can't wait to show you because it's got um, the C Express Reader on it, it built into it, which is amazing for doing this. Uh, but my background is um, still photography, moved into motion. Uh, I mean, I deal with big files, these cameras, I shoot RAW, I shoot C500s a lot, but everything I'm dealing with RAW, backing up, archiving, editing, data is, so, you know, it's, it's, it runs side by side with every shoot. So, you know, it's really important to, for, for, for the right workflow and uh, you know to make sure everything's safeguarded properly especially when we're coming back with from shoots that cost you know hundreds of thousands of pounds a day to shoot um, so I'm looking forward to talking about all of that I'm going to hand you over to Mike now uh, to uh, say hello as well yes guys thanks for joining yeah my name is Mike Will at m.visual on Instagram I'm a creative photographer based in the UK uh, mainly work in the travel industry so obviously right now it's been a bit of a different kind of shift um also i tour with dj so a lot of music festivals uh so again i'm going to talk a little bit later on about my creative workflow and how um yeah that differs incredibly to brett's actually which is a, gr a great kind of reflection of our very different styles which is amazing obviously his is incredibly large files whereas mine's on the go uh, mainly photography based so it's going to be all about the rugged kind of on the go if i'm traveling I'm on the go. I'm really looking to obviously get this, this as small a package as I can in the safest. Um, so I'm talking mainly about the uh, SSD rugged. Um, yeah, a few of my clients I've worked with, the likes of Xbox and um, Samsung, Google. I'm also a Sony European Imaging Ambassador. So I work very closely with Sony on a lot of projects uh, around the UK and Europe, which is obviously um, a great thing to be a part of. I shoot on the Sony A7R3 have that with me now so again any questions on that um yeah let me know obviously these file sizes are a little bit smaller so again that's why i can get away with the rugged kind of system and use that while i'm on the go uh, all the time traveling um or creating content for brands as well if i have the ruggeds there obviously for me they're the safest and uh, most secure option um i have i'm also the founder of uk shooters uk shooters is a creative community we host photography events for people to get together meet other like-minded creatives and create content uh, a lot of it's based through instagram so again that's at uk.shooters we host these events that have people as i said just to get together and meet people it was a it was a great thing that we were running in 2019 2020 has been a bit different we've been doing some stuff remotely but we're looking to, to really launch that again in, in 2021 as well so yeah i'll pass you on to uh, back to keith here Thanks, Mike. Awesome. So let's go over to Michael. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Michael. I've been at Lacey for 10 years now. Uh, I'm the Lacey specialist for UK and Ireland, looking after our channel partners um, with a big focus on the uh, creative pro industry. Over to you, Edward. 
Thanks, Michael. Uh, thanks to Keith, our host. I'm very pleased to have uh, Brett and Mike on board today to share some very exciting uh, experience, uh, obviously. So I'm responsible for LACI cells in, uh, in EMEA. Um, I've lived in London for the past 12 years. And I will certainly miss uh, this year the, the excitement and uh, the, the crowds of uh, uh, TPS. Uh, I hope we can recreate some of this uh, excitement here today. Back to you, Keith. Thanks, Edward. Certainly, thanks everyone for the introductions. And I think it's you know bizarre times, and you know certainly you know personally uh, really miss not being at the show, uh, engaging with what is it, thirty five thousand people, kind of lose your voice every day. But uh, it's um, it's uh, it, it's always you know a, a great event. So hopefully through some of this presentation, we'll be able to uh, bring back some of that life via um, uh, this uh, remote. Uh, uh, presentation. So we live in a fast paced world, broadcasts, you know, creativity, everything's now done on the fly, it's it's streaming live. Um, and and certainly the last six months has been, you know, kind of like an adapt and survive mentality. And, you know, people are looking at, uh, you know, how, how they can do things differently, how they can work differently, certainly, uh, Brett and Mike are going to be uh, discussing those. Uh, so for now, if we go over to Edward and you can maybe take us through your portfolio, really of how Lassie helped creative professionals uh, in this new world. Over to you, uh, Edward. Thank you, Keith. All right. So I would like to share some content. Here we go. I hope you can all see and this is still coming. 30 years. 30 years indeed. So basically, before we hand it uh, over to Brett and Mike, um, I wanted to share with you a few uh, uh, quick updates. Um, so as you know, or not, but Lassie is now uh, uh, the premium brand of uh, Seagate, uh, really focusing on the creative pro industry. As a matter of fact, we just celebrated our 30 years uh, anniversary. Um, uh, which is quite a, 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 a statement. Of course, today, 30 years in this uh, boiling IT industry is always a, a great performance. Um, uh, Keith, I think we see Mike uh, slides, not mine. Nope, we see yours, uh, Edward. Oh, sorry, it's just uh, delayed here. I'm not seeing this uh, yet. But anyway, uh, here we go. Thanks. Good old so, memory. 30 years of. Yeah, good old memories, I, I, exactly. It sounds quite old to be 30 years old, but uh, um, we've been serving the, the Creative Pro uh, community for 30 years uh, on trying to, to be creative ourselves uh, through design, through uh, product features, obviously, and, and product development. So I just wanted to give you a few quick facts about, uh, about this uh, without uh, uh, falling into uh, nostalgia, of course. <laughs> but uh, so 30 years ago, we, we launched our first uh, external storage uh, solution. Uh, in 2013, we were uh, first to market uh, external th Thunderbolt uh, solutions, followed by, uh, in 2014, uh, our first external SSD. The same year, uh, so Seagate uh, took over the C and uh, really reinforced uh, our commitment to the creative pro industry. And in 2019, we got up to a whooping 168 terabytes uh, uh, Thunderbolt solution, uh, thanks to our 12 big. So getting bigger and bigger, and uh, I guess it will never end. Uh, we are talking today about uh, uh, having soon the, the new 18 TB that uh, we at Seagate just launched uh, recently. And uh, we, the 20 uh, terabyte is already uh, inside. So more projects uh, that we will be able to, to store again uh, very soon. Um, and uh, this year as well, we'll talk about, uh, about this uh, later on in the presentation, but uh, I'm very proud that we announced those uh, very advanced uh, SSD solutions for, for Creative Pros. You would see uh, we offer them in our range of uh, USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 based uh, uh, interface. Moving on, so what do Creative Pro needs, uh, need? Um, so it's uh, through our product development that we have a, a focus on enabling Creative Pros uh, to uh, securely and quickly move data. 
uh, as uh, they see fit. And obviously, the, the market has uh, drastically uh, evolved, and we are um, constantly aiming at offering the best storage uh, solutions here. So Brett and uh, Mike will share uh, real life examples, uh, we'll, which will talk more than what I'm doing right now <laughs> to it, but uh, on how they store uh, their project, uh, share and uh, secure them. In the meantime, uh, with Michael, uh, I'd like us to articulate some of the key pillars uh, that we have uh, considered uh, throughout these years, uh, and that makes uh, uh, Lassie uh, uh, today. So um, whether you talk steel or moving images, storage needs are exponential. Not that long ago, we were talking megabytes, and no terabytes were standard. 4K almost seems behind us. 8K is here, and, and no 12K is just around the corner. So we see that volumes produced keep growing. Um, I think Brett will uh, confirm that he creates 2 terabytes per shoot easily. So with up to 168 terabytes, we get you covered. So capacity is one of our uh, key pillars, but with capacity goes uh, performance uh, requirements as well. And allow me maybe an analogy with the, the, the construction uh, industry. The higher the building, the faster the lift has to be. And it, the same th goes uh, with the storage, basically. The bigger the project, the higher the resolution, the faster your storage will have to be. Mike, for instance, will. Uh, talk about uh, uh, his very busy agenda, moving from uh, one gig to, to another, where he needs to quickly back up his uh, data and uh, even sometimes start editing on, on site. So that's our commitment, basically, to uh, technology, uh, to um, interfaces. Uh, I mentioned that we were first to market Thunderbolt 1, but we were also first to market Thunderbolt 2 and 3. Uh, we also use very uh, premium products uh, and components like uh, enterprise class uh, hard drives. And uh, recently, uh, we had a, a strong commitment to NVMe SSD to really address the, the most demanding uh, needs, uh, basically. So capacity, performance, but you want it big, you want it fast, but you also want it secure. So that's uh, data protection, another uh, key pillar for, for, for us. Um, different uh, uh, protection that uh, you would expect uh, from our products. The first, uh, you want to be uh, protected against the loss of data, and that's backup. Brett, I think, uh, systematically does uh, three copies of uh, his uh, data. He will talk more about this. But that's how strategic and important your data are to your uh, business, so you see, or personal life. And please bear in mind that the main cause for data loss is human error. Always back up your data. The second uh, protection is against the loss of access to the data. That's what we call RAID. Uh, so the RAID units, the multi uh, drives array. Um, and that's really to prevent any downtime. Time is of the essence when you uh, edit uh, and, uh, and create content. And the, one of the last protection is against unwanted access uh, to, to your data. As you go and move your data around, as you send your rugged drive uh, to the other side of the planet for video editing uh, and so on, you don't want your data to end up in the wrong hands, basically. So that's what makes, uh, in some cases, encryption absolutely necessary. But we also offer uh, data recovery, which is uh, the ultimate solution if you uh, obviously uh, uh, don't have a proper backup or you lost your, your backup drive and your data. Uh, I'm glad to announce that we uh, today offer data recovery as a service uh, for each uh, Lassie product that you, you can find on the market. So that's really a great commitment. We do that because we are confident in the quality of our products, but we want to go the extra mile and really offer this extra level, level of uh, insurance to our, our users. And finally, we're also uh, glad to offer the best in class uh, warranties uh, up to five years on some drives. Uh, which also uh, 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 help you uh, uh, sustain your, your storage needs over time, obviously. So 
Evol uh, the usages are, are changing and uh, first thing to think about is mobility and when thinking about mobility small is beautiful especially if you have a limited space for gears while on a, on the field i'm sure mike will uh, agree with this um when shooting outside you have to face different conditions um that's why shocks water pressure dust resistance are important and the rugged ssd covers you against these hazards performance is uh, also key up to 2800 meg per second, uh, like on a rugged SSD Pro, uh, means that one terabyte of data can be transferred in about six minutes, so you have more time for your other tasks. With a BOSS range, BOSS standing for backup on set solution, we've pushed our product development to offer an autonomous, computer free solution for your backup on site. On the field, you don't always have access to an external power source, and thus, back up your footage using a laptop can be tricky. The Rugged Bus offers a solution to cover that challenge. And uh, one big dock SSD Pro, uh, it's really all about ingestion and, and docking on, uh, on site. It's a professional desktop storage solution and docking station combined into one product. I know Brett's using it, so I'll tell us more about it. Thank you, Michael. So let's see it's here for all your stages, whether you capture, edit, share, backup, or archive. Uh, let's see as a, a solution uh, for, for you. We, uh, we are here to enable your creativity and support your most demanding uh, uh, projects. So please keep on creating, keep on being uh, more and more demanding. That's what uh, fuels our creativity and, and passion for this uh, industry. And now let's have Brett uh, take us uh, through a, a typical workflow. Uh, Brett, over to you. Hi, how are you? Can you uh, see me or have we still got the slides up? Oh, Michael, if you, uh, sorry, Edward, if you want to just uh, close out the slide, but not remove. There we go. Hi. Oh, yeah, so um, thanks, uh, Edward. So uh, shark resistant drives, um, uh, a nice, uh, nice feature. And um, I, really, without any further ado, uh, let's go over to Brett. Uh, Brett, I'm going to try and play your show reel, which um, uh, yes. I think that's, it, it, it's awesome. So if I can press the right button, uh, let's do that. And then um, we right, can uh, go over to you. So let's see. Fantastic. So, uh, Brooke, if you're still online, let's um, shoot over to you. Very, very inspiring video. You, you've got me live now. So you I are think live, sir. 
Um, actually, what, what was really interesting there was going back through all the history of all the pictures from the last year. I think I've used all of those products from the CD burner up. In fact, I remember sitting there waiting for, was it 650 meg to burn to a CD and it used to take about 20 minutes? Um, you know, now on these cameras, I mean, that, that little collection of work, I mean, that's over a few years. And you can see I do a lot of commercials, but we're always in quite harsh environments. Um, you know, we're on the top of mountains, you know, um, New Zealand, where we shot it was, we went from, you know, minus five to 20 degrees, Australia in 40 degrees, 50 degrees, um, you know, so we're shooting with these cameras and, and the, store, the amount of data that these things shoot is huge. It's, uh, you know, roundabout, I quite often come back one to two terabytes of information a day, which is a, which is a lot to deal with on set, um, you know, and that's being fairly, fairly nice to the record button because I come from a film background. so. I don't leave the camera running all the time. So, but what I do love is the fact that, you know, with, with the fact that I'm, I can shoot and I can now edit real time on my laptop and I'm doing that a lot on the road. Um, you know, I travel, I was before COVID traveling 200 days of the year. Um, and I can literally now, it blows my mind, but I can sit here, shoot 4K raw or 6K, this is the C300, but when I'm using the C500, I might be shooting 5.9K raw. And I can, in my hotel room, um, go to my laptop and, and edit real time off the raw files. There's no transcoding, there's no nothing. So my production pipe is so much better. Um, the way we tend to work, and this I got sent the other day and we've you know, just taken this to Turkey with me. Um, so this is the big one SSD, but what I absolutely love about this is it's got a CF Express Reader in the front of it. So I can take it straight out of this. This has four terabytes, put the card straight in, I, I can then suck it straight into this and it's so fast because it's just doing from the card to the SSD. Um, and then what we always do on set is we do three copies of everything. Um, so we have a Digitech or somebody else doing it. Um, and then at the end of that one day, the three copies go off somewhere else. Uh, so one will go with me uh, usually, you know, so I can review the footage in the hotel room, especially if we're shooting again. One goes with the producer and one stays with the Digitech. Um, and that will stay on those drives until we get it back to uh, the production, but whoever's doing the production facilities or, uh, and also as well back to my place. Um, and then back there, and I've got some stills which I wanted to share. Um, so I'm just gonna pull these up. So back at my house, uh, I'm quite lucky, but because I come from a stills background, uh, I basically have, and if I click on this, it might take a little, I have, I'm, I have a 12 big, which I use as my main drive off my uh, off a DaVinci Resolve suite at home. So I'll come back with my um, with my footage and dump it onto there, and then connected to that on the other side, on the right hand side of that, you'll see that there's a six big, and I use that as the as basically as as the um, scratch disk for DaVinci Resolve. So you can see it's set up there. But the thing what gets me is I can sit here and I can basically edit and grade uh, at home. And I don't always do it myself. It goes out to production facilities a lot. But I can sit there, edit and grade at home, uh, 4K, 6K, raw files. Now, I remember, um, you know, not that long ago, even at the start of some of those products that you were showing, even the CD burners when we were shooting film, that we, we would have to go to a facility and, and uh, we were still scanning in film. And the big thing that nobody could do was store the data. So to be able to sit here now, and, you know, and I've done it where, you know, we shot with this camera and, um, you know, we can, we can literally cut cinema quality uh, on, off this system uh, via a laptop and then actually screen it uh, is, you know, blows my mind. So my workflow is, you know, as I say, we shoot with this, we go down to an SSD on the day, we back up to three of these until it's got back. We then take it back. Um, I might even start work on this earlier and then transfer it when I get home or it might go to a facility. But because I've got everything backed up and I'm working in the raw format, I'm not transcoding everything because the drives are fast enough to do that. And as we were saying, I think you need the 2880 um, throughput, uh, which these things all have. Um, I can do that on the, on the fly. So I'm straight into my workflow. I'm not stuffing around. I'm not having to do anything else. Um, it's then onto my system. I know I've got it backed up. And I just stay in that raw workflow all the way through. And then what we do is that then lives on my drive on the big uh, 12 big 
for as long as I can until that. I mean, at the end of the day, that's still going to fill up. I can't remember what that one is. I think it's, I think it's 68 terabytes or somewhere around about there. Um, and then what I'll do is jobs that we've finally had enough of um, or we're not thinking we're using, we'll dump down to maybe two or three of these. And, you know, there's a cupboard at home that's full of drives to free up the 12 big so we can start to work. Um, and, you know, people say, well, you know, why do you keep all that information? But, you know, we, we're looking at stuff and we're going, well, five years ago, uh, HDR, uh, I mean, I shot the launch for the Canon C300 Mark II. At that time, you know, we shot with the camera. Uh, we backed up it all. We kept everything. Now, that camera, I would still wanted to keep the raw data from the shoot because I always wanted to go back and relink it. Now what's happened, we're five, six years from that camera being launched, and HDR now everybody can view. I, I can sit here and view HDR on my iPad. I've got an HDR TV at home. When we shot that, that camera could shoot HDR, but I don't think you could actually ever view, you know, viewing HDR was virtually impossible. But the footage... That on my Instagram still, oh, sorry, my, my um, Vimeo still gets around a 1,000 views a week. I can now go back and remaster that because I've kept that file. So backing up and keeping all that data to me is so important. Um, if I turned around and only kept the transcoded or converted the, to uh, ProRes and gone, that's what I'm going to keep, I couldn't go back and remaster an HDR file. So by keeping all that information and backing it all up, you know, I, I've got workflows that I can go around left, right, and center. Um, you know, and, and and just to show you the speed of this, and, you know, because people go, you can't do this on the laptop. I mean, I've got a MacBook Pro. This is last year's MacBook Pro here. Um, I, I, I dumped some files onto this. This is full, almost full now because I've got a project on it that I'm working. Now, hopefully this all works, and I've got no problems here. Uh, here we go. So, I mean, I'm going to flip over to DaVinci Resolve, so you're going to have a little look here. Um, and I mean, I can scrub. Now, this is this is 6K raw files playing on my laptop. You can see it's all playing back real time. It, it It's giving me a workflow on my laptop in a hotel room that, that years ago, or not even that long ago, four years, five years ago, you know, I would have had to have gone to a massive facility to have got this done. So, Having this, you know, having this stuff to my, uh, where I can use it is giving me so much more creativity and freedom. And, you know, um, normally I would never have thought about grading stuff myself back then, but now I can do it all because I have access. You can see here, if I come in and uh, click on some of these files, um, you know, they're loading in straight away. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't cached any of these in. I'm scrubbing through all of this. You know, everything's working real time, um, you know, so. On the fly, I, I can start to create pretty much cinematic quality content if I want to do it. So, you know, to have that, uh, you know, in front of me is what I'm getting really excited. Everything I do now, I keep in a Thunderbolt 3 uh, situation because of the speed and because it can be daisy chain. Uh, I mean, you can see when I showed those pictures earlier, I had an eGPU uh, that can daisy chain through the drives. The drives can all daisy chain on. So, you know, I, uh, on the desk, I had this little unit. I had the two, uh, the 12 big and the six big, and they're all daisy chained together. So I'm not worried. Whereas the other Thunderbolts, you couldn't do as much. And I think on, um, you know, other systems and, you know, uh, it, it just didn't work. So Thunderbolt 3 for me is working. Um, we get interesting stuff and we can start, I mean, we, we, you know, I think we can tell a few funny stories about storage and what happens. But, you know, it, I go off and we shoot, we come back and we shop, you know, two terabytes on this. So I want to get these cards clear, as clear as possible. I mean, these little tiny things here, which has now become the main industry. You, I mean, uh, you'll probably be able to tell what, tell us the price of these, Keith. I'm not too sure, but a 512 disc uh, gig card, I don't know, six or 700 pounds. So, you know, you don't want to have a massive amount of these floating around. Um, so at the end of the day, to, to clear these cards as fast as possible so that we can then carry on shooting, um, you know, having the SSD and the speed that that is now transferring onto this, because even four takes on this uh, is around ooh, 250 gigs I'm dumping down each time I'm sort of rolling. So, you know, I want to get that off that card onto there as fast as possible. Um, so, you know, keeping it inside and going back to those funny stories, you know, we end up with this, you know, two terabytes, one terabyte of stuff, and we still get clients turning up and set with the USB keys wanting to take away the data at the end of the day, you know, and it's like I look at them and I go, 
well, it's not going to fit onto there because you haven't got a two terabyte USB key. And then they turn around and they turn back up and set and they've got a, 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 US, a, a USB hard drive. And you look at it and say, well, that's fine. But, you know, the Digitech is going to sit there and, you, you know, the overtime is going to be six hours for them. They, you, they really do not realize that the difference, you know, some of the, an SSD drive might transfer something. I can't remember. I think uh, it was a, about how long a terabyte was taken. It was about seven, eight minutes, something like that. Um, if you tried to dump a terabyte down to a USB drive, ooh, maybe four hours I've seen it happening. So, you know, speed and essence and workflow is, is what, you know, and, and stability is what we're all trying to do. Um, and keeping it so that I can work um, myself on, on my laptop and keep my creativity. And that's what I'm liking without the headaches. Um, I mean, CDs used to drive me up the wall and I'm not driven up the wall by storage anymore. And that's what I'm really enjoying. Um, I'm going to hand back to Keith now because I've probably waffled on too long already. Uh, but I do remember we are going to um, uh, send in some questions as well because, you know, I, I like talking about storage. Thanks, Brett. That's uh, truly, truly amazing. I mean, the, you know, as you said, I, I don't think people realize, I mean, you know, with the codecs coming out and, 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 and getting much better, you know, the algorithms are phenomenal, CPUs yeah. are now phenomenal, phenomenal, but, uh, you know, th there's still that time. Um, and people, you know, as we were discussing a few weeks ago, you know, pe people just keep everything. And um, it's uh, it, it certainly adds to the challenge of workflow. And as you said, it, it's all about uh, it's all about speed. Um, yep. So, so on that on that note, um, our next guest, Mike uh, Will, um, I think his phrase to me was, "It's all about." speed and small or small and speed or speedy small exactly uh, something, something like that so i guess without further ado um would you like to uh show the audience through some of your work and comment on the of course workflow? um firstly floor's over to you sir brilliant firstly brett that was amazing thanks for that information and the the show reel was awesome to watch uh so my workflow again is going to be very different to that which is great for obviously you guys that are watching and tuning in um, again, any questions at the end, we're looking to obviously answer some of those. I'm going to run you through some slides now. Uh, it's just going to be some of my work so you can kind of understand maybe some of the stuff that I've shot. Um, and then I'll go through perhaps some of the shoots, how it went, maybe some of the DJ stuff, actually what I was doing and what countries and I was at multiple shows um, across. So we're going to start off here um, and all good. So can everyone see? Are we good? Certainly good, sir. We're on. We're live. Sweet. OK, cool. Um, so, yeah, so travel obviously is a big part of um, my, yeah, my kind of general, well, as as Brett said as well, he's traveled 200 days a year, which is what I was on as well. But now it's, it's slowed down. But while we're on the go, having something that is small and, you know, can last all sorts of weather conditions. So I'll have something in my bag and, you know, that shot in Paris, for instance, a great example I had. A rugged ssd in my bag and it was pouring down with rain absolutely getting soaked and you know i had no worries at all that my that my data was was gonna was gonna have any problems um moving on to vegas actually when i was in vegas i was working for the tourism board so i was creating content for not only um the tourism board so the views and kind of obviously encouraging people to visit but also uh, again a lot of live shows live music so i was out very late and then I was getting back and I had SSDs on me to make sure that I was obviously backing up on the go and had everything. Um, so again, that was a, I was a really fun place to be uh, and creating um, and obviously having that data storage. Now this was at Tomorrowland. So that's one of the largest music festivals in the world. 145,000 people are there. Um, it's busy. It's sweaty. It's you're getting bumped into all the time. You have your, your gear with you everywhere. Um, and then here it was straight back to the UK for another show the following day. So again, it was, I had to get everything as fast as I could. I took about 4,000 images from this, um, and I had to get them off as quickly as possible, edited as quickly as possible, moved on to the clients as quickly as possible, and then on to the next show. And obviously trying to get sleep in between all of that, as well as having a good time. Um, so with the help of Lassie, obviously it makes that a much more enjoyable experience for myself. Um, Again, here's just some some travel work while on the go. Uh, we've got New York on the on the left, and obviously London, where I'm based, on the right. So a lot of my creative workflow is uh, adverts 
on social media for brands. So the shot on the left is actually an advert for Vodafone. So again, it's just a kind of the way I work is a lot of this is very quick that that, that client needs that right away. So again, it's all about having that speed and, and something on me at all times to then be able to edit from, get those edits done and uh, and straight over to the clients. Again, just some more travel stuff and some creative things from San Francisco and then from the UK down at Beachy Head. Again, more uh, more night photography. As, as I'm sure you're seeing, there's a, there's a general theme here that firstly, my images are, are quite blue and kind of have this electric kind of feel to them, which is an editing style that I, I kind of uh, started about three years ago kind of playing with and it became my, my known style in, in the industry. Uh, and the night photography was where it kind of all really kicked off for me and became um, something that I was known for within the industry and what a lot of brands and clients uh, were asking for was was night photography. So again, having having something small um, and you know that can take you know dust, water, and lots of impact. And that's why the SSDs are the one for me while I'm on the go, traveling um, and yeah, shooting all this amazing content from some amazing places. This was a campaign I was doing for in Switzerland. And um, yeah, again, it was just all about getting up, getting the content and getting it over to them as quickly as possible. So finishing up here, we've got another shot on the left from London and on the right um, a campaign I was doing in New York, um, obviously a helicopter ride. So yeah, hopefully that shows you guys some of my work so then maybe that does also give you guys some more um, questions. I think we're back on the screens now, are we? Yeah. Um, so that hopefully will, will give you guys some some more questions and so how my workflow is um, as opposed to Brett's and obviously his is a, as an intense, massive data kind of output and mine's a much smaller stills on the go, very quickly getting that, that data across um, and much probably a much quicker turnaround because a lot of clients expect it the next day, which is, um, obviously need, need to have that speed right so uh keith back to you mike that was phenomenal i think you know between brett's uh showreel and um and some of your inspirational pictures uh i, I think if, if anyone's having a stressful day at work i think a little kind of clicking through to watch some of those would be um would be very inspiring so thanks for showing us through the work and i, I love the, the the hint of the blue that's uh Actually, my favourite colour. So good, uh, good job on that. Um, so there have been. So actually, um, before we go to some questions, I can see some questions coming in that uh, we can start going through. But the Tomorrowland gig um, that looked a bit nuts. And I'm thinking, you know, you've you've got your camera strapped around you. Uh, you know, you're, you're probably going to have beer being thrown all over you. Do you tend to, you know, if you're solo, do you tend to? You know have everything on you at the same time because obviously trying to get through that crowd to get back to base to do stuff i mean do, do you find that you're kind of wearing a lot of your tech and you know i mean wearing tech have you ever had any dilemmas i guess is probably a good question to ask um i tend to if i'm going into the crowd uh for a look back at the dj on, on stage i usually leave all my stuff on stage with him uh, we'll have a tour manager there we'll have um, other people usually we have security so luckily I'll be like, watch, watch my, watch my stuff. So everything will be touch wood, will be safe with those guys. And I'll head out. I have two bodies usually with me, so I head out with both my cameras. Usually I have kind of the shots ideas that I want, so I have a, a slightly wider, and then I'll have a zoom with me. Um, but no, luckily, I mean, obviously, yeah, you get people spilling, spilling beer, but generally people are actually quite um, accommodating when they see your cameras and they realise you're actually working, and everyone's trying to have a good time, so they usually part, part for you and. And move on. So I've been, I've been alright. And then my my storage stays on stage in the most the safest environment I can leave it while I uh, while I head out into the uh, into the madness. Blending in with the uh, blending in with the um, with the audience. So yeah. So one of the one of the questions to you, Mike, and it's a nice question actually. I'm going to also ask this to uh, Brett as well. So Mike, uh, uh, you've got some very unique capturing and editing style. Uh, how did that start and what's your favorite city to shoot in? Uh, so it came about, yeah, about four years ago, my cousin was a photographer in Australia and he had this kind of, uh, he was into night photography and he kind of inspired me to get into it. And then I took his editing style and made it kind of my own. I made it 
this kind of electric neon kind of feel. And the reason I, I kind of, I guess, started that was because I wanted to shoot everything. And at the time, everyone was kind of like, oh, you, you know, you need to pick portraits or, or landscape or, or what is it that you, you do? And it kind of was, there wasn't really this, this kind of genre of, yeah, I shoot everything. And that was something that I wanted to, to kind of do. I just wanted to get out and, and create as much as possible and learn my craft so I could become the best of what I, you know, best of my abilities and constantly learn and improve. And with editing, that meant that I could, I could keep it on Instagram. I could keep it consistent. And consistency is so key on social media to then grow a following because people like having consistency. So the only way I could, I wasn't consistently posting portraits or night or whatever. It was, I was posting everything. So that came about with an editing style that then kept the consistency um, in play for social media. And then obviously it worked out really well that it, it kind of got, a, yeah, it worked, obviously clients like it and people like it. Um, and then I guess my favorite city, that's a really hard one. Um, I'll just go with London because it, it is so fantastic and it's, you know, it's home and it is great. And I always, whenever I go away, I always come back and I'm like, oh, I, this is a, such a cool city to shoot. Um, but I guess, Honorable mentions would be like New York, Hong Kong, um, LA, uh, anywhere with some kind of real city vibes. Is they're, they're, those guys are definitely out there as well. Nice, thanks. So Brett, so uh, when you're off doing your car commercials, uh, that's got to take you to some pretty extreme places. Probably not really classified as cities. Um, no, I'm doing that in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the top mountains. Yeah. Yeah, where would you um, where would you kind of think your you know favorite kind of shoot for you know one of those? Uh, I, I, the most beautiful place I think I've shot is um, New Zealand. It's just uh, Queenstown in New Zealand, which is where we did Jaguar. Um, it's the only time we we spent three days driving around doing location recce's to realize that in the space of probably an hour's drive from everything, you could literally have 20 locations and it's the first time that rather than actually go oh we didn't find what we were looking for we had a hundred locations we could have shot in and we actually only needed five it was just ridiculous it just didn't matter which way you pointed the camera it looked amazing and it just changed and changed but you know the wet the weather there is pretty harsh so you you, you can start in the morning and uh, and we, we had it we had thick mist and fog um and we couldn't shoot for three hours we we're literally about to give up on the shot. We started driving down the mountain. Suddenly, sun games that came out, and then we get to the next location. It's snowing. You know, we're trying to make the ad look like it's a consistent commercial. <laughs> so, that added a whole there's, new level. There's, of, uh, there's yeah, only, it, only so much kind of resolve can do to kind of fix those yeah, um, exactly, exactly. Those extreme weather conditions. Yeah, of, I mean, uh, so much so that at the back end of the Jaguar commercial, I think the closing shot. Uh, is actually made up of four plates because we couldn't get the weather to link together. So we had to go back and reshoot the sky and then reshoot the mountains and drop them in front of the car. Because, you know, you've got 70 people, you can't just fly them back in again to catch a one shot. Wow. So, yeah, so you've got to make sure you've got a way of getting around it to make it all look together. So that commercial went from every, we had every form of weather going um, over two days. Wow. That's, uh, that's nuts. And, and I guess also for some of that with the pandemic, you know, having 70 people on a shoot, and I know, you know, it's outside, you might be in a volcano and maybe that's COVID, you know, COVID safe. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, it's got to be quite extreme. Um, yeah, it's, it, uh, we, we've just started looking at it now. Uh, I've, I mean, I've got one job that we're looking at, I think we're going to have to do it all remotely, which is going to be quite interesting. Um, but now what we're doing is we're breaking everybody up into little groups. So, uh, you know, um, and it's actually interesting now that the drives and the cards are getting handed around on set and they have to be wiped before they get on to the next person. Very, very true. So, so now, so you've got to be careful how you use the terminology wipe because it's either a wet wipe or a wipe oh. the drive. <laughs> don't want to be doing the data wipe, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't want to get that round the wrong way, do you? <laughs> oh, brilliant. Um, so there's a question coming in, actually, Mike, for uh, shooters, by the look of it. Um, in terms of the events that shooters run, are they open to everyone in terms of availability? Oh, uh, Mike, I think you're on mute. Good spot, good spot. Uh, yeah, they're open to everyone. Of 
they are free for everyone to come to. We ticket the events just to keep the numbers um, manageable because the last time we didn't ticket, we had over 500 photographers come, uh, which was pretty mad in L central London, trying to organize everyone to go in the same direction. Um, but yeah, for more information, if you just go to the at UK shooters Instagram, all the info is on there and obviously a link to our website as well. Uh, right now, we're looking at ways how we can do things remotely. So at the moment, we've got a challenge going uh, to, to capture Britain, which is a fun competition we're running. Um, and then hopefully as soon as possible, we'll be able to run these events again um, in a safe environment for everyone to come to, hang out, socialize and meet other like-minded creatives. Oh, good. That's Thanks, Mike. So uh, the other one is, sorry, I just have to flick screens to kind of just go read some of these. Um, so I guess uh, a question about rigs. So um, question to Brent, let's put this up. Sorry, Brett, let's put this to you first. Um, obviously, when you're going off to do your shoots out, uh, and I guess this changes from your static photography to your uh, out and about, um, how do you kind of choose you know, between you know what 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 you're going to take for the shoot for the for the day, or you know, for if if it's a longer project, what's how do you kind of map out what you're going to take? Was that oh, that was to me? Sorry. Was, oh, sorry, Brett. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it was the, the initial const, the initial thing is to see how big the job is going to be, how many days it is, and what cameras we're going to be shooting on is probably the main thing to start with. So. We kind of guesstimate how much storage space we're going to need. Um, you know, are we running one, two, three cameras? It makes a big difference. Uh, you know, if we're running three cameras, well, you're going to probably end up with three to four terabytes for the day. Um, and then we'll work backwards from there. So, you know, the, the 12 big goes out on sets sometimes um, if, if we're suddenly running three cameras or shooting raw. Um, I mean, I did a lot of work with the with the C700 with the codex recorder, recorder on the back of it. Um, and that, uh, I think that's a terabyte. God, you'd have to remind me on that one too, I think. But that, I think that is a terabyte every hour that camera runs at, if I remember off the top of my head. So, you know, you need some fast drives on set. Um, you know, and we took two of those to New Zealand. So, you know, every hour we're going through two terabytes. So. So we'll, we'll work backwards from what we're shooting, estimate what we need, and then go from there. So, I mean, if I was only taking out one camera and I wasn't shooting raw, I'd go with something much smaller and quicker. Uh, if I'm going out, you know, it, it just grows up. Um, you know, if we're shooting three cameras or all shooting raw, though, we will have a Digitech on set. So, you know, it just depends on what way we're going. If I'm going out on my own, um, you know, this is fantastic. I'll just use this on my own. Um, yeah, so it just really, that's what you've got to work out is what your storage requirements on the day are going to be. The other thing too is what I like to do is I don't like to have it, once I start a job, I, I like to try and that same drive, I like to keep everything on it. I know we keep backing up, but but if you, if it sounds weird, but if you start to split stuff across drives, it, it, yeah, I can, see, I can see you're a nodding away with me on that as well, Mike. It just starts. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's a headache. You forget where stuff is. So, you know, the drives that are going offset are getting progressively backed up, and they're getting added and added and added. Um, but if you go, oh, I've got that drive and that drive. Yeah, you just get in an absolute pickle, and you come back and you try and reconnect. Yeah, it's a nightmare. So, so again, whatever the final, you know, however much, however long the shoot is, um, and we're doing a shooting, uh, shooting. November, uh, and I've got two five C five hundreds, and it's a eight day shoot. So that's going to be twenty. I reckon twenty terabytes for the week. So there's going to be big drives going out on that. A near smidgen. <laughs> 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 but I guess uh, Mike. So um, uh, again, you know, uh, out and about. Uh, obviously you're not going to have the same kind of crew uh, that Brett has, um, you know, or maybe you do have 70 people scattered around, but uh, uh, you know, how, how's that kind of contained for, for you out and about? Yeah. A lot of it is, is working on my own or, or working with a small group of other creatives that where they're helping each other to shoot a campaign. So um, an easy example is a, a recent campaign I did for Xbox. We were shooting um, video stills and we had just one person then helping us out. Um, that was kind of running, jumping between video and stills as well. So there was, 
it was a, it was a great project and we were obviously backing everything up um on site but it's generally just me and my backpack um and off i go and 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 with with another maybe a couple of photographers as well if we're all you know shooting the same campaign um but it is yeah a much smaller kind of uh yeah as you said fast and and small if i can put it fit it in my backpack and my camera bag off i go and and that's uh that's the way i, I love to work so but again having everything the importance for me uh, i mean i was nodding away and i and 100 percent. but i cannot do different projects on different drives so the importance of having everything on the same drive for the same client is absolutely important for my workflow so uh and obviously that helps having the, the size and the, and the kind of yeah durability that they have yeah that i yeah i did i can't stress that one enough and i, I the, think um, i've split stuff cross drive i actually this is years ago uh, i did manage to delete something because i forgot it was on it was spread over two drives <laughs> so, yeah yeah so you, 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 you didn't shout baby wipe you you shouted yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wipe. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's a question here for uh, the Lassie guys. Um, are there new boss drives coming out later this year or next year? Courtney, at the end of the Thanks, year. Thanks, uh, Keith. Yeah, I'll take this one. <laughs> so we we had the first iteration of uh, boss drives with the the G DJI Copilots, um, the the, the grey-looking drive. Uh, that we uh, um, very recently replaced by uh, the Lassie Rugged Boss, uh, which comes with uh, the orange bumper uh, and SSD this time. Uh, and this one was launched uh, just uh, a quarter or so ago. So for the moment, we are uh, focusing on this uh, on this uh, version, and uh, the next version is not uh, uh, confirmed yet. Great. But it's still brand new. Thanks, Edward. Uh, so another one coming in. Um, when you're working for your clients, and I guess this is someone who's obviously um, uh, a creative person, when you when you're shooting for your client, do you think they understand the stresses that you do about you know the, the value of your data? Um, I know Mike, um, we were discussing this um, last week about you know your big gig with um, what was it Xbox, and you know that's a significant you know in Google significantly large clients and even though you've got you know as uh, uh as brett said you know a, a very rigid um uh, uh backup strategy do, do you think that people under you know your clients understand the value of what's you know you're you're kind of doing for the day um i mean brett shook his head I'll, I'll agree not necessarily and also a lot of the people you're working with just don't understand it because they're working for agencies or whoever it is that's, that's kind of organizing the gig you're you're then shooting so um i've even been asked sometimes to email them the files that are you know thousand raw images and uh and you're like hang on you want what so i think obviously it's, it's important that, that you know they don't understand that again coming to you with a, a little pen drive and being like right can you just put everything on here for us and the actual importance of, of of all the gear that we have to then back up or to to you know produce multiple copies for safety um i don't think it's just it's something that the industry doesn't really um yeah it doesn't really understand enough about because it's not talked about enough so that's why i was really keen to get involved with this to try to try to um yeah educate as many people as possible uh, and as many people from from different backgrounds that maybe don't know as much about it actually how important all this is um and for creators as well that are kind of just getting into it and, and learning um, about this, you know, how important it is, yeah. Great. So what else have we got? Um, so that was uh, actually, the, I talked about that earlier. I've so, got a question for, for Lassie. Go for it. What's, I, well, I'm just interested. So what's next? So you guys are obviously, in, you know, I'm always blown away with every product you bring out, but what's next for the kind of, obviously for me being looking at the, the, the rugged SSDs, are you looking to expand the size? Are we looking to um, make them smaller? Are we looking to what? What? What are you guys kind of, or what else have you guys got in your in your mindset for the future? Um, good question. Uh, now, quite many things or many um, area we could cover with that. I mean, first is capacity, as you say, it always gets uh, bigger and bigger. Even though for this type of product that you just showed, the rugged SSD, we want to keep the format small, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we will get uh, more capacity into this type of uh, product as as we go. 
Um, there is also uh, obviously uh, all the uh, development around the technology. Uh, today we talk about Thunderbolt 3, but uh, Thunderbolt 4 is around the corner, uh, as well as a USB C, uh, um, sorry, a USB uh, 4 as well. Um, in terms of um, capacity again, but more for the desktop drive that uh, Brett is using in the in the 12 big, for instance, or 6 big. Uh, I mentioned earlier, but uh, today we have the 16 TB. Uh, soon we will have the 18 uh, terabytes, and pretty soon as well, as uh, we announce it, uh, 20 terabytes will be also uh, uh, becoming uh, available. So um, more and more uh, uh, capacity, uh, higher specs, uh, more speed, and and still, of course, we want to. Uh, uh, better understand and stay very close to how you guys use uh, our products. So, and you have different use, uh, whether you want small and fast, whether you want big and uh, uh, with a very uh, uh, high speed to uh, edit uh, 4, 6, 8K. Uh, that's exactly what we try to, to, to get closer to. Well, I think one thing we both have that's quite interesting though, is we both, um, both require the rugged side of things. Yeah, it. that's your that data shuttle. Yeah. I mean, back, for backup, but for exchanging data, etc. But yeah, yeah indeed, it's uh, easy to, uh, and you can get even up to eight terabytes today on those uh, on those products yeah. with uh, the right the rugged right the shuttle. Thanks, Edward. Uh, we've got one last one coming in. I know we've got a, a couple of minutes left. Um, this is for Brett. Um, how do you does do you keep your clients' data forever, or how do you make the judgment for uh, the longevity of how you keep it? Yeah, we try and keep everything. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's, there's some stuff you just go, well, there's no point in keeping that. But, I mean, I've got a few clients that repurpose their stuff. So if we turned around and actually deleted it, uh, you know, <laughs> we might not have been, we, you know, we, if we'd say, suppose we'd done 20 takes, and I do this with one of our other clients, they make their commercials uh, they're a furniture company. They make their commercials over products from even two, three years ago. And what they do is they edit together sections of four or five products together. Um, if I turned around and only kept what I viewed was the best two takes, and I've had instances of this, and I've gone, they're graded, they're ready to go. When we've come around and we've cut their latest campaign, we've needed some of the older shots, I found that those takes that I had weren't right. So I've actually gone back to the old files and found that actually, no, the camera tracked at a different speed and it cuts in better. So, or the camera was raising faster, or we've had it on the techno crane and it's come through the room at a better timing, um, or the talent was in a better position at the time. So I try and keep everything, to be honest with you, if we can. Um, I mean, you know, get the old client saying, oh, we don't want to keep everything, but then they do realize that, that you know, well, you do get to that point. It's like negatives. I mean, you don't, you know, would you have turned around and chucked out negatives? Just going to kind of burn them in the basket. Yeah, exactly. Did you sit there with a strip of 36 and chop out the three frames you didn't like and throw them away? No, we didn't do that. So, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I personally, at the end of the day, compared to the shoot, compared to everything else, the data is actually really cheap. So, you know, you, you, you're just saving on for the sake of it. Yeah, yeah. Good. That's my view of it. Yeah. Good insight. Keep everything. Um, yeah. So I think we're pretty much, we're pretty much at the end there. So... Uh, I guess um, big thanks to uh, Mike, uh, Brett, uh, Edouard, and Michael for uh, taking part. Um, hopefully next year at TPS we'll be uh, here in person um, rather than visually scattered across the world and um, see where we go from there. So thanks. I've got a slide to put up just at the end here just with everybody's uh, contact details. Let me just see if I can click this on here. Uh, it's myself, Michael and Edward, and this is uh, Brett and Mike. And just to close up, this is the uh, final slide for thanks for attending and uh, being part of the uh, Perfecting the Art of Creative Workflow, which um, hopefully everyone Everyone enjoyed, and uh, this will be this recording will be live uh, for the future. So, uh, with those contact details, feel feel free to reach out to our panelists. And I, Mike and Brett, can't thank you for enough for taking part. Um, uh, enjoyed it. Always, thank you. It's always Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. 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 Always yeah. inspiration yeah. talking to you guys. <laughs> so, um, thanks ever so much. Goodbye, everyone. Cheers. Thank, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.